So in web development, content is everything. So the reason why your viewers, the visitor of your website, go to your website is probably because of the content. But the way the user and the viewer absorb the content is very important as well. So dun po mapasok yung CSS. So yung CSS provides a better experience dun sa mga viewers and visitors ng mga website natin. So it's very important to have a very beautiful content, a very productive content. But the way the user experience your website and the way the user interacts with the website is very important as well. So, ang ibig sabihin ng CSS is cascading styles. And basically, it provides design, provides visual pictures and interactivity dun sa, ano, dun sa, sa mga website natin. So, just to give you an example dun sa power ng CSS, I'm going to show you some website that showcase the power of the CSS. So the first website is called sengarden.com. So basically it's a website on where on where there's an HTML and yung sengarden.com was sent to different developers and designers and the goal is to have the designer design redesign the website with their own CSS team CSS content. So, ang naging result is different styles as you can see. So, subukan natin tingnan dito sa mga given tabs. So, we have this one. So, ang catch sa pag-design nila is hindi nila babaguhin yung content. So, pwede sila magdagdag ng additional images pero the content is just the same. So, take for example, ito yun. One of the example is itong uh, CSS Zen Garden na ang pangalan nito is yung may robot something, di ba? So as you can see, may additional design sa background and gumagalaw siya. So entirely, nabago yung team, nabago yung feeling habang ninanavigate ng user natin yung website. From this one, di ba? From, from the plain and calm, naging mas techy siya, kung mapapansin nyo dito and mas, mas ano mas mas jumpy yung design niya. Also, we have also designs like this. So same goes na same yung content pero magkaiba lang yung CSS na ginamit. And also we have something like this. Okay. So medyo uh, wild uh, wild west yung team. Kung mapapansin niyo, nagbago din yung ano yung team niya. From the previous three, eh, makikita niyo na nagbago yung team at nagbago din yung feel habang nag interact tayo dun sa website. And lastly, this one is quite interesting kasi ito, gumamit siya ng uh, cartoonish effect dun sa website. So, nakalagay pa rin dito yung overall content pero nakalagay uh, iniba lang yung yung orientation, yung, yung arrangement ng text as well as yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng content gamit yung CSS. So, this is uh, one of the power of the CSS. So, another one is let's take a look of one of the site na pwede nyo gamitin if you want to discover some reference with regards to creating web. So, yung W3 Schools is a very comprehensive website on where you can find a tutorial and reference to the web development tool that we are using. So it stretches from the plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript up to the server side and different frameworks na pwede nyong gamitin such as Bootstrap. So if you want to learn more, you can access W3 Schools and you can uh, read the tutorials na nakalagay dito. So ito yung titingnan natin na isa sa makikita natin sa w3schools.com. So as you can see, it's a plain website. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, as you write your heading, ganito lang yung tsura niya, di ba? It has no styles at all. So, subukan natin. So, dito sa merong three styles na ginawa. At pag tinignan natin yun, eh, ito yung style number one. So, as you can see, nag mas naging uh, organized yung content, di ba? And 
it's also has different colors na unlike before. Pag tinig na naman natin to, nagbago yung team. So from green and blue nas naging reddish yung design niya. And also this is number 3. So nagbago din yung CSS has the power to change the presentation, the layout nung, nung mga elements natin. So as you can see, block siya. Ibig sabihin, eh, nagsastock siya from top to bottom. Ngayon, eh, inline na siya, sunod-sunod na siya from left to right. And number four, ito. Diba? Makikita natin na medyo plain siya. Pero as you can see, you can still feel na ginamitan siya ng, ng design. Okay. So ito yung power ng CSS. So at it brings your website to life and it's very powerful kasi even though you have a content kapag hindi maganda yung experience yung interaction ng viewers natin it was a turning point kung babalik pa sila o hindi, di ba? So kung bibigyan natin ng analogy yung mga artista na pinapanood natin, yung mga influencer na nakikita natin is quite beautiful. Pero sometimes, they are needing makeup pa rin para mas maging presentable sila. They put a lot of lighting sa mga sa mga sinushoot nilang films and everything kasi nga, mas gusto na maganda yung presentation. So, same actor, same actress, pero then again, they need another emphasis on their visual effects para mas maganda yung in-expect sa kanya. So, in one way or another, that's one way of explaining CSS. That's the power of CSS. Okay, to put it simply, CSS are just rules associated with an HTML element. And those rules tells the browser how to display that element. So, let's take a look up at a sample of HTML rules. So the first one is we have a selector. So this one is a selector. So every paragraph will have this design na nakalagay dito sa rules na to. So pagkatapos ng selector is meron tayong open and close curly braces. And sa loob ng open and close curly braces is meron tayong declaration. And yung declaration natin has two parts. Yung tinatawag nating property and value. So, every CSS rules has its own properties and values. So, for example, yung colors is pwedeng blue. Yung width is dapat numeric value siya. And the value and the property is separated by a colon. And nagtatapos ang isang declaration sa semicolon. So, technically, hindi natin kailangan ilagay yung semicolon pero it's a good practice na i-end natin ang CSS declaration natin para mas readable siya tapos hindi siya masyadong magulo. So a certain declarations, a certain rules can have many de declaration kagaya nito. So mababasahin natin siya yung lahat ng P, lahat ng paragraph will have a color blue tapos yung font size niya is magbabago magiging 20 pixel. Tapos, declare din natin na isiset natin na ang iti-take niya, iti-take up niya lang speed is 100 pixels. So, that is an example of a declaration. Now, a combination of rules is called style sheets. So, yung style sheet, makikita nyo siya, you have two rules na nakalagay dito para sa P tapos sa H1. So, technically, technically pwede naman walang laman yung style sheet natin, pero it won't be useful, kaya... Dapat merong at least isang rules na nakalagay dun sa style sheet natin. So the combination of rules of CSS is called a style sheet. Okay, so let's take a look that into action. So pupunta tayo dun sa ano natin sa Visual Studio Code and see kung paano natin to makikita into action. Okay, so I have here uh, an HTML document with styling na kasama na na dito and we're going to discuss that a uh, little bit. So, first things first, yung styling is dapat makikita sa sa head. Okay. So, head diba contains all the information related to the HTML page. And isa sa mga information ng HTML page is yung styling niya kung paano siya ma-display. Kaya nilalagay natin ang style dun sa head. 
And let's take a look at the content of our HTML document. So the content of our HTML document is we have one H1, meron tayong isang H2, meron tayong dalawang H2 pala, tas meron tayong dalawang paragraph. Okay? And based on the rule we have on the style sheet we declare is meron tayong P, lahat ng paragraph should be color blue, font size is 20, and width is 200. Tapos yung H1 natin should be color green, tapos 36 pixels siya, tapos naka-align siya sa center. Kapag in-open natin siya dun sa browser, ganito yung magiging itsura niya. So, this, are, this is the heading na naka-center and kulay green. And these are the two paragraphs, as you can see, ito yon naging ku ku kulay blue siya. Tapos yung width niya, as you can see, it only takes up 200 pixel. Pero you may be asking, bakit merong design itong H2? Hindi naman natin dineclare siyang bold. Tapos hindi rin naman natin senet yung, ano, yung, yung font size niya na medyo malaki. So, there are default styling na nakalagay sa lahat ng elements natin na din display ng browser. So, kahit hindi natin siya lagyan ng design, automatically meron ng design, meron ng orientation kung paano siya i-display. So, ang ginagawa natin is pinapalitan lang natin kung paano siya dinidik kung paano siya i-display ng browser natin, inoverwrite natin yung default kagaya ng ginawa natin dito. Okay? So, yung lahat ng P ganito yung magiging itsura tapos yung H1 is ganito naman yung magiging itsura. If we remove the CSS Pag tinanggal natin siya, if we cut it out, tapos kapag sinave natin, pag ni-refresh natin yung browser, what we'll see is just a plain CSS, kagaya nito. Okay. And kapag binilik natin siya, makikita natin na babalik yung itsura niya, kagaya nito. So in summary, we discussed the syntax of the CSS rule, which is composed of a select for a declaration and a property and value pair. So between the value and pair is we have a colon and para ma terminate natin yung declaration is we have a semicolon. And we also discussed that a combination, one or more CSS rule is called the style sheet. So CSS selector is very important because it tells the browser kung saan niya ipuput yung mga designs na sinet natin, yung mga rules, kung sino yung mag inherit ng mga designs na yun. So, another importance of CSS selector, kasi ito rin yung ginagamit ng mga framework sa JavaScript para ma-determine at para ma-point out yung mga HTML element nandun sa HTML page natin. So, it's a very important, it's a must-have skill kung gusto nyo talaga mag-web develop maging web developer kasi nga it points out to the elements of the web page and the, of the website. Okay? So subukan natin. So there are three selectors that we're going to discuss. Those are the element, the class, and the ID selector. Let's start with the element selector. So from the previous example, we already see the power of the element selector. So the element selector points to the specific kinds of elements on your HTML page, regardless of the number. So take for example, we have a P tag here. So meaning to say, if, if it was declared on your HTML page, lahat ng cool ng P, lahat ng paragraph in your HTML, mapa 1,000 man lang man yan, or mapa isa man lang yan, or mapa sampu tatlo, lahat ng yun is magkakaroon ng cool i blue. Okay, so that's the element selector. So, kailangan lang natin i-specify yung element name, tapos kailangan lang natin siyang ilagyan ng open close parenthesis and write some declarations, and lahat ng yun is may inherit na nung element na yun. Uh, ganito yung itsura. Uh, lahat ng text na nasa loob ng paragraph is magiging blue, such as this one. So, another type of selector is we have the CSS call selector. So, we can define a CSS selector with a dot before the class name. So this is called the class selector. So the class selector 
can be specified to different kinds of elements. So as you can see here, we have a paragraph with a class blue text. So yung nasa loob niya is magkakaroon, ah, magiging blue yung text niya. And also, as you can see, the, we have uh, div, ah, kaya lang ang class niya is blue text din. So ibig sabihin, this is blue text din. And yung walang class, kung mapapansin ninyo, is unaffected. Now, based on this example, mapapansin natin ang class selector can be specified to more than one HTML element. So every class, every element with the same class as we declared is magkakaroon, may inherit niya yung rules na sinet natin. So that's class selector. So determining the class selector is meron siyang dot on the declaration. Dun sa pag-set pag natin ng CSS rule, nilalagyan natin ng dot sa unahan. Pero kapag ina-access na natin siya in our web page dun sa HTML, kailangan natin maglagay ng attribute lang. So, yung attribute is yung attribute name followed by attribute value na nakalagay sa open and close uh, quotation and separated by an equal sign. And hindi na natin kailangan lagyan ng dot. So, same goes with that. Wala ng dot sa pag-access and kapag declares, dapat merong dot. Now, the next part is we have the ID selector. So, ID is represented by the pound sign. And the difference between ID selector and the class selector is you can only use one ID to a single HTML element. So, ibig sabihin, dapat unique siya dun sa web page. Kapag meron tayong ID at in-specify natin siya sa more than one element, magkakaroon tayo ng HTML error. Hindi yan papasa dun sa W3C validator. So, the difference between ID and selector when it comes to declaration is yung pound sign. Okay? Now, as you can see in this example, yung ID, may ID na name, yun lang yung magiging green. And yung, may ID, yung walang ID is magiging unaffected. Okay? So, that's the ID selector and it was represented on the declaration using the hashtag or the pound sign and kapag ginamit na natin siya just like the class ang kailangan lang natin is to define an attribute this time ang ilalagay natin an id and same goes it was separated by the equal sign and yung value yung pangalan ng id natin is enclosed in open and close quotation mark. So to write more efficient rules, CSS allows us to group selectors. So as you can see in the example, we have a div and we have a class in a single declaration, with a single declaration. So meron tayong isang element selector and we have a class selector combined and yung property and value niya is isa lang. So, mas efficient siya kung babasahin natin. So, ibig sabihin, yung div, our element selector, every divs, div in our HTML page will have a color blue. And lahat din ng may class na blue text will also have a color blue. And then the rest, kagaya nitong P, is unaffected. So, remember that to have a grouping, so if we explicitly want to group an element, ang kailangan natin gawin is lagyan dapat natin siya ng selector. So, kapag nilagyan, pag hindi natin siya nilagyan ng selector at ginawa lang natin space, we'll have a different effects on our HTML page. At i-discuss natin yun maya, maya So, let's see that in action. So I have ha my I have my Visual Studio Code open and on the right side of it is the HTML browser, the Google Chrome browser, on where I have already run display my HTML document. So as you can see, it has a plain content and kung titignan natin structure ng web pages, we have one heading, we have a couple of subheading yung H2 and we have a paragraph with class and also paragraph without class and another one is we have a span na merong id na main point so let's take a look at the content at the app at the head tags 
uh, style on the head tag. So, titingnan natin dito. Sabi daw, ang kailangan daw natin gawin is all H2 element ay kailangan daw ganito yung design. So, all H2 element, madali lang siya. So, H2 is lagyan natin siya dito. And we save that. Kapag tinignan natin ito, ganito yung maging itsura niya. It's red and it detects a light. Another one is with class highlight. So, lagyan natin ito ng class. Para makapaglagay tayo ng class, kailangan natin maglagyan ng dot. Tapos, lagyan natin ng high light. And save that. And refresh the documents. Kung makikita ninyo, we have two paragraphs with the class highlights. Kaya ganito yung naging insura. So take note na hindi lang to related sa paragraph. If we uh, rewrote this and lagay natin to si ID. So kapag nilagay natin yun, eh, ganito pa rin yung itsura niya. Diba? So div, bakit ganito yung nangyari? Marami siyang nakuha yung sa bandang ko. Ba? Kasi ang closing niya is P pa din dito. So palta natin to Gawin natin itong div para maging okay yung HTML content natin. And then, makikita ninyo na nagbalik na siya sa dati. So, class effects on every kind of element. So, kagaya nito, P and div, they are different elements. Pero, as you can see, when we put class to it, na-inherit niya yung design na gusto natin. Okay? So, another one is we have yung main point down natin is kailangan ganito yung maging design niya. So, lagyan natin yun. So, Para makapag-design tayo ng, ah, para makapag-declare tayo ng IDs, we have to declare, we got to write the hashtag at ilagay natin yung main point. Subukan natin itong gagana. Kapag nilagay natin yun, supposed to be nandito siya sa bandang baba. Pag tinignan natin is, nandito na siya. So, to take a look. Let's see kung gagana ba ito. Subukan natin to So, yung malaking piece, sinanggal natin. If I... Refresh it, kung mapapansin nyo nawala na. Kasi yung casing, yung uppercase or lowercase letter na pagkakasulat natin ng ID kapag nilagay natin siya, matter. So, magkaiba yung main point na slow caps, uh, low caps at mas iba din naman yung main point na ano na, na upper caps, uh, uppercase yung pagkakasulat niya. Okay, another one, this is quite easy. Ang kailangan lang natin gawin is lahat daw ng P at H1 is kulay blue. So, P, let's change, delete this. Tanggalin natin itong XXX na to. And let's have P, comma, H1 para mag-group natin siya. And then, refresh, save and refresh. As you can see, ganito yung magiging itsura niya. Okay, so lahat ng P is naging kulay blue. And naging text align center siya. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ito hindi siya nagbago. Kahit may class siya, nakagaya nito. Kasi nga, ito ay declare natin, binago natin siya as dev. Okay. So, yan yung HTML selector natin. So, as simple as that, we have three selectors already na, na, na discuss. So, we have uh, the element, we have the class, and we have the ID. Now, so in summary, on this lesson, we tackled the three simple CSS selectors, the element, the class, which is defined using the symbol dot sa unahan. And also, we already discussed ID. Ang symbol naman para ma-define siya is nilaligyan natin siya ng hashtag. So the least uh, selector na ginagamit is yung ID kasi isang element lang yung ginagamit niya. E pinupuntahan niya. And when you're developing a web page, usually there's a lot of elements you're going to deal with. And kapag isa lang, you're going to write a lot of codes on that. So rarely ginagamit yung ID. So there's a specific reason kung saan natin ginagamit yung ID. And usually sa CSS, hindi natin siya masyadong ginagamit. But it's good to know to understand kung saan natin ginagamit at kung paano natin gagamitin yung ID tag on pointing out to the element of our web page. So as discussed on the previous lesson, combining HTML selector is an efficient way to writing your CSS rules. So let's discuss a couple of grouping selectors on CSS. So first one is we have element with class selectors and it's written like this. So we have a P element here with a class P. Mapapansin nyo yun kung bakit siya naging class kasi we indicate dot para mag-determine natin siya na class siya. Okay, so pag tinignan natin yan dito, kung makikita natin, if we read that, we have 
and every B element at uh, meron siyang class na big is magiging kulay blue. So kapag tinignan natin yan, and also you need to understand, you need to bear in mind na dapat walang space in between yun sa declaration natin kung gusto talaga natin ganun yung mangyari. So our aim is to have every P na merong class na blue magkaroon ng color blue. So, dapat hindi natin siya lalagyan ng space. Kapag nilagyan natin ng space, that will have a different effect on our HTM, ah, on our CSS ruling. With that, on our declaration earlier, every P tag with the class blue should have a color blue. So, kapag tinignan natin yan dito sa document natin, so, lahat ng may class na blue at P element should be, ha should have a blue text on it. Samantalang, even though this one, meron siyang class na blue, kaya lang siya div element, hindi siya affected. And also, this one is also unaffected din kasi wala siyang class kahit na siya. So, in this one, we have we also have another grouping is yung, ano, yung child selector na tinatawag. And to, in, to have a uh, child selector, kailangan natin maglagay ng greater than sign between the parent and the child. So, ang parent dito is yung article tapos yung child is yung P. So, ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Sa loob ng article is nested yung P sa kanya. So, what this means is every P that is a direct child of an article is magiging kulay blue. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Kapag yung P, ah, kapag meron tayong article and automatic, uh, automatic sa sunod na element is yung P, yun lang yung magiging kulay blue. So, kapag tinignan natin dito, ah, uh, yung P, even though nasa loob siya ng article, is unaffected. Bakit? Kasi hindi siya direct child. Bago nagkaroon ng div, is, ah, bago nagkaroon ng P, is nagkaroon ng div muna. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya direct child. Ang magiging kulay blue is ito. ba Kasi direct child sa after the article tag is meron na tayong P tag. So, magiging blue siya. So, this is also una unaffected kasi nga, wala naman siya sa loob ng article. So, that's child selector. So, another selector is what we have, what we call descendant selector. So, dito naman, unlike uh, child selector, dito, ang sineselect naman is every level. Basta nasa loob siya nung article, in our case, meron tayong article dito at P, ang um, mangyayari is yung nasa loob niya is yung descendant nitong article is maging kulay blue. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na if we put some space dun sa class o kaya naman eh hindi kung gusto natin ng selector tapos hindi nag, naglagay tayo ng kama ganito yung mangyayari. It, CSS will count that as a descendant selector and hindi na siya yung uh, kung yun yung gusto natin gawin na uh, grouping selector. So, dapat walang space kung yun yung gusto natin gawin. So, to create descendant selector, ito lang yung dapat merong space. So, anong magiging itsura niyan kapag nilagay na natin dun sa browser? So, if we declare descendant selector, so, just to emphasize, ang descendant selector is meron siyang, L, uh, meron siyang selector and there's a space between para maging descendant sila. So, what it means is, lahat ng nasa loob niya, lahat ng nasa loob na element niya is magiging kulay blue. Kagaya nito, so this is a P is inside the article, so kulay blue siya. And also, ito din, blue text din siya. So even though may div, pero sa loob pa rin ng article is merong paragraph. So this will be affected as well. And yung nasa labas, since wala naman siya sa loob ng article, will be unaffected. So that's descendant selector. So, uh, bear in mind that this is not limited to element selector lang, kahit na yun yung diniscuss natin kanina. So, what we discuss mostly is about uh, element selector yung nauna, di ba? So, the parent is the element. Ngayon naman, it is possible to have different selector combined at a given uh, combination. Take for example, we have a combination of class and P. So, ibig sabihin, if we have an element na ang class niya ay colored at, at sa lo lahat ng nasa loob nun na paragraph is magiging kulay blue. Diba? If we read that out loud, every P that is inside at any level of the element with class colored is magiging ganito. So, dito naman is we have an article, uh, an element selector at meron tayong class selector na colored. 
every element with class color that is a direct child. So, ibig sabihin sa loob ng article, dapat is merong element na ang class ay colored. Okay? Yun yung mga apektuhan nyo yung magiging kulay blue. Okay, so let's see that in action. So, again, I have my Visual Studio Code layout along with my Google Chrome browser. So, let's inspect the element nung web page natin. So, on this element, uh, on this web page, we have a very simple uh, content. Meron tayong H1 na meron siyang um, class na highlights. Tapos, meron tayong dalawang paragraph, yung isa is merong class and another one is meron tayong div na meron ta na merong dalawang class declaration. So kung mapapansin niyo, you have two class in here and it's only separated by by a space. So ibig sabihin dalawa yung class nitong div na to. So let's um create some CSS on this web page. So una daw is kailangan natin lagyan ng design na background color na green lahat ng merong highlight. So ang kailangan lang natin is nagawa na natin siya kanina actually. So ang kailangan natin gawin is yung highlight is ilagay natin siya dito. So save that and refresh. So makikita natin lahat ng merong uh, class na highlights is nagkaroon ng background na green. Also, sabi daw lahat ng element na P na merong class na highlights is dapat lagyan, uh, maging italic. So, madali lang yun. P dot highlight. So, lahat lang ng P na merong class na highlight ay magkakaroon ng text na italic. So, let's refresh this. Kung mapapansin ninyo, ito lang yung uh, nagkaroon ng, uh, naging, ano, naging italic. Kasi nga, siya lang yung paragraph. Tapos, siya lang yung merong class na highlight. As you can see, ito ay highlight, may class na highlight, ito may class na highlight. Ito rin, uh, ito ay paragraph, pero as you can see, hindi siya affected. So, ito lang yung nagpumasok dito sa requirements natin. So, huwag kalimutan na walang space dito kapag ganito yung requirement na hinihingi. Next one, sabi daw ay lahat ng elements with class highlight as well as class main point dapat daw ang background color is black. Paano natin gagawin? Ay di kailangan natin i-stack yung ano, yung 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 class kagaya ng ginawa natin dito. So difference is it is a class. So magsisimula tayo sa class na highlight. Tapos we're going to follow it with another class ng class name naman ay kung papansinin natin, ang nakalagay ay main point. Main point. Okay, so yun yung div natin sa baba. Kapag ni-refresh natin, kung kapapansin nyo, walang nangyari. Bakit? Kasi yung main point natin, let's check, siya ay capitalize yung P. So as we discussed earlier, na merong, be uh, merong be uh, bearing yung case ng pagkakasulat niya. So ginawa natin yun, ganito na yung mangyayari. So that's uh, CSS class selector. Okay, so let's have an example of yet another grouping in CSS, which is the child selector. So before we uh, set some HTML, uh, CSS ruling, let's uh, inspect the elements of this web page. So in this web page, we have an H1. And on H, uh, after H1 is we have a section. Yung H1 has a direct child na subheading 1. And sa loob, also after the subheading 1 is we have a div. And after the div is meron tayong article na nasa loob. So up, uh, we have two sections actually. So yung first is na-discuss na natin. And also, yung pangalawang section is merong article na nasa loob. So sa labas nun, on the same level as the H1, the sections, is meron tayong H2, yung subheading natin. So let's take a look at the CSS requirements na nakalagay sa taas. Sabi daw, any article elements which is a direct child of a section element and any element whose immediate parent is the section element. Article, any element, may spelling article, which is a direct child of a section. So, sabi daw, dapat direct child siya. So, paano pa tayo maglalagay ng direct child? So, sabi daw, uh, yung section yung parent paano natin siya yung section kasi sabi daw dito yung article daw is 
the direct child. So we have section na direct child daw niya is yung article. So sa loob ng article, ah, sa loob ng section is meron daw immediate na article. So yung ginawa, ginawa natin. So article is the child and the parent is the section. Kapag ginawa natin yun, ganito yung mangyayari. So kung mapapansin niyo isa lang yung naapektuhan because isa lang yung merong section na merong direct child na article. So even though uh, ito, meron tayong article dito sa loob ng section, it is, uh, uh, resides deep in the nesting. So hindi siya direct child. So to make it uh, have the same ruling dun sa dineclare natin kanina, dapat ay nandito to after the section. Okay. So next one is any H2 element which is a direct child of the section element. So, any H2 whose immediate parent is the section element. So, ang section daw is, anad, yung section daw is yung parent ulit. Tapos, ang kailangan daw natin is yung lahat ng H2 na nasa loob. So, kapag ginawa natin yun, sumukan natin i-save just like this one. And, ang makikita lang natin is ito. So, we have section, ito. At ang meron lang direct child sa kanya is yung heading 1. So, hindi naapektuhan ito, sex, uh, subheading, kasi nga wala naman siyang parent o direct parent na section. So, that's child selector. So, bear in mind na dapat yung immediate child na tinatawag is after the uh, opening tag, ang sunod na immediately is yung pang-ayong hinahanap nating element. So, take example of this, yung section, dito siya gumana kasi after ng section is meron na agad article so that's what it's mean to ano, to to have a direct child na groupings okay okay so let's discuss the last grouping this uh, let's discuss the last grouping selector which is the descendant selector so before we do that is we have to uh, let's let's take a look at the element of this HTML web page. So, in this HTML web page, we have H1 na isa, and also after that is meron tayong section. So, sa loob ng section is we have H1, and sa loob ng H1 is meron tayong UL, an ordered list, and meron siyang item. So, on the next part is meron tayong article na merong subheading na H2, and meron siyang an ordered list, just the same. So, ang requirement natin daw is sa lahat daw, all li elements that is inside the section element is ganito yung hahanapin natin. Sabi daw lahat ng section daw na merong li, ang kulay niya dapat is kulay green. So tingnan natin yun. So color green. Kapag tingnan natin yun, section and li color green green what's wrong with green shoot okay so yan gumana na yung green kagaya nito okay so subukan natin iba so Ah, uh, ito naman tingnan natin sa lahat na uh, hindi kung mapapansin niyo, hindi naapektuhan yung article tapos uh, yung yung dito sa shopping list na cake kasi uh, sa shopping list natin sa bandang baba kasi kung mapapansin yung article siya. Okay. So kung gusto natin na ganun din yung mangyari, just the same ID, ang gagawin natin is ilagay natin, ilagay natin example yung group, yung ano natin, yung yung isa pa para makapag-combine, maano tayo, makapag-group. So, ang igagawin ko is yung article, kung mapapansin ninyo, ang gusto ko lang mangyari is lahat din ng article, tapos may li, is magiging kulay green din, kagaya nito. Okay. So, to do that is naglagay lang ako ng kama, ibig sabihin end. And, kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, on this example, yung li is, uh, Bird, uh, is deep on the nesting dito sa section natin kasi bago magkaroon ng li is merong ul muna okay so same goes dito merong ano merong merong ul muna bago magkaroon ng li 
Pero as you can see, since kumami tayo ng descendant selector, since ang hinahanap niya man is lahat ng, ano, lahat ng li na nasa loob ng nesting niya, so na-select pa rin siya at naging color green. Okay. Okay, to sum up today's lesson, uh, we combine selectors, so element with class selector, kagaya makikita ninyo, this is the element and this is the class. Uh, walang space and merong dot. And we also have direct child selector na ginagamitan natin ng selector and uh, greater than sign in another selector. And also, we have descendant selector. We have a selector space, a selector. And we discuss kung anong pagkakaiba ng child as descendant selector. So there are many other selectors na hindi na natin na-discuss uh, which is uh, unpopular naman, hindi siya masyadong ginagamit, kaya hindi na natin siya masyadong in-emphasize. Okay? So, we're using pseudocode selector if the combination selector cannot be used on a certain use case. And another one is kapag gusto natin i-catch yung user interaction, such as yung pag pag hover ng mouse dun sa link and something like that. So, para makapag-declare tayo ng pseudo class selector, what we need to do is, in every selector that we already know, so yung element, yung ID, tas yung class, kailangan lang natin maglagay ng colon and the pseudo class selector. So, the most uh, popular pseudo class selector is ito, yung link yung visited, yung hover, tapos yung active sa link siya, dun sa a tag siya nakasama. Tapos yung end child is gagamitin natin mamaya. Uh, it's very interesting kung paano natin siya gagamitin. Uh, pero it's a fact na there are many type of pseudo, many, many pseudo class selector na nag exist Pero i-cover lang natin itong mga to which is very, very, very much popular. Okay? So let's jump on to the code para ma-discuss natin siya ng maayos. So I have here yet again my Visual Studio Code and beside it is another HTML, uh, another web browser, Google Chrome browser. So just like before, let's inspect the element. So dito, mama, kung mapapansin niyo is we only have uh, one H1. Meron tayong header, meron tayong UL na gagawin nating navigation, and meron tayong section that is consist of uh, 20 dibs kung mapapansin niyo dito. So, and we have a CSS task na nakalagay dito sa taas. So, number one, sabi daw, make the header uh, a menu. So, gagawin natin itong menu. So, ang una natin gagawin daw is a really move natin yung bullet dun sa sa li natin. Kung mapapansin niyo li siya, tapos sa loob ng li is meron tayong href. So, ang gagawin natin para maging, ano siya, maging menu is, ang una kong gagawin is, kukunin natin yung li, tapos gagawin natin siyang walang list. So, ang una natin gagawin, di ba, kailangan natin ng element selector. And, ang sunod natin gagawin, li yun, ang sunod natin kailangan gawin is, tatanggalin natin yung uh, list style, is tatanggalin natin siyang none. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, wala ng bullet text na nakalagay dito. So, check na yung number one. So, on number two, ang task natin is make the link look like a button. So, ito yung link natin. Nasa loob siya ng li. At ito yung i-design natin isa-isa. So, sabi natin, kailangan natin siyang, uh, kailangan natin i-design yung, yung button natin. So, first na i-design natin is kailangan natin i-declare. Dito na tayo magsa-start mag-code ng ating sudo class. Maglalagay ako ng A tapos maglalagay ako ng visited. A ah, link pala. So, yung link is just the link. Diba? Dineclare lang natin siya na yun ay link. And lalagay natin ng comma. Tapos yung A na visited, lagay natin ng visited. Just like this one. Kasi nagbabago yung design kapag hindi mo pa siya nabibisit. Tapos nabisit na natin yung link. So, we want that to be the same. Kaya ganito yung nilagay natin. Lalagyan lang natin siya ng uh, 
uh, pinagsama na natin siya sa isang ano, sa isang uh, sa isang set of rules. So yung link tapos yung visited pareho lang yung design ng gagawin ko is gagawin kong text decoration is none. So walang wala siyang design. Kapag ginawa natin yung kumapansin niyo matatanggal yung underline kagaya nito. Okay. Tapos lalagyan ko rin siya ng background color na kulay green. Yan natin na background color na green. And then, ang sunod natin gagawin, uh, subukan natin yan, isa-isa. Yan. So, ang sunod natin gagawin is lagyan ko ng, kailangan ko, gusto ko nang lagyan siya ng border. Okay. Para magkaroon siya ng box effect. Tapos, ang border is 1 pixel. Tapos, solid siya. Tapos, ang kulay niya ay blue. And, tingnan natin dito. So, nag, ganito na yung naging itsura niya. Another one is, gusto kong, instead of blue yung kulay niya, gusto kong gawing kulay black. Color is black. Just like that. Save and refresh. So, makikita natin yung pagbabago. Now, uh, diniscuss natin from the previous meeting na ang link is both inline and black level element. So, uh, with regards to that kind of concept, actually, uh, yung inline tapos yung uh, yung pagiging inline and pagiging black level element ni link, ni A tag is sa pamamagitan lang na pwedeng ilagay sa kanya. So, di ba sabi natin yung inline element is hindi pwedeng maglagay ng ng black level element. So, si Angkor, si Link, is pwede siyang magkaroon din ng black level element. Unlike na inline element lang siya. Pero, kung titingnan natin, inline element pa din si Link sa pagkaka-display. Paano natin sabi natin na inline element lang siya? Kasi nga, Kung mapapansin nyo, yung tinitake up niyang space is hindi yung buong width nung, nung browser natin. So, ang tinitake up niyang lang space, uh, space is yung, uh, yung, yung supposed to be i-occupy yung mga letters na nasa loob niya. So, kaya naman niya naging sunod-sunod, nakastock siya from... Uh, uh, vertically, nakastock siya vertically kasi nga, nasa loob siya ng LI. ba? And LI is a black level element. Kaya ganito yung naging isura niya. Pero kung hindi siya nakalagay sa loob ng LI, ma ang mapapansin ninyo, eh, nakastock siya into, ano, into, uh, into, ah, nakastock siya horizontally. So, ibig sabihin, magkakadikit siya dito. So, paano natin ito gagawin? So, ang aim natin is gusto natin siya maging, 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 ah, uh, button. So, madali lang naman. Actually, ang kailangan lang natin gawin is uh, gawin natin siya na ang gagawin natin is instead na inline, ang display niya is gagawin natin siyang block. Display block. Pag ginawa natin yun, magiging ganito na yung itsura niya. So, yan na. Meron na siya. Uh, Inoccupy na niya na yung, ano, yung, yung buong with nung, yung document natin kagaya nito. So, ang sunod na natin gagawin is uh, gusto ko meron siyang specific ano space na lang siguro so ligyan natin ng width sabi natin 200 pixel lang yung inoccupy niya kaya nito so ligyan natin to ganito 200 pixel tapos ang gusto kong gawin is maging center din siya so text align is uh, gawin ko siyang center and then pag ginawa natin yun ganito yung isura niya tapos hindi rin dapat siya magkaka mag, magkakadikit so ang gagawin ko is yung margin bottom margin sa bandang baba is lalagyan ko ng 1 pixel para hindi siya magkakadikit. So, ganito yung magiging sure niya. Okay? So, yan yung uh, nagawa na natin siyang ano, nagawa na natin siyang uh, maging button. So, lahat ng link, so, kahit na na-visited niya, eh, di ganito pa rin yung, yung ano niya, yung style niya. Hindi siya magbabago. Okay? So, ang sunod natin gagawin is we want to make our link inter, uh, ano, uh, interactive. So, paano natin gagawin? Siyempre, sumugitan din ng sudo class. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na kapag gusto natin i-capture yung um, 
action ng user, ito yung gagawin natin. So, lagay tayo ng A, tapos gagawin natin siyang active. Tapos, ano man yung ibig sabihin? Uh, another one is lagay tayo ng hover. Okay. So, ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng active tapos yung hover? So, yung active is kapag clinic yung link pero hindi pa niya binibitawan. Okay? So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng active. Yung hover naman is kapag tinapat yung mouse dun sa dun sa ano, dun sa dun sa sa link. Yun yung hover. Okay? So, lagyan natin yun ng design para mas maging interactive siya. So, as of now, kapag nilagay natin yung ginawa natin yung hover, as you can see, hinover natin siya. Wala pa rin pangyayari. So, gagawin natin is lalagyan natin yung ganong action. So, ang gusto kong gawin is magbago yung background color niya so, maging background color niya ay red. Tapos, to further emphasize, ang gagawin ko is, magbabago rin yung kulay niya. Magiging, sabihin natin purple. Para pang lalaki. Just like that. And let's refresh this. And kapag ginawa natin, hinover natin, ganito na yung maging itsura niya. Okay? So, that's uh, being interactive. So, check na natin yun. Now, we need to emphasize a certain link. Okay? So, paano natin gagawin? I-emphasize yung certain link. So, ang gusto ko is, mas emphasize yung MC portal. Okay. So, it's a link. Kapag clinic natin yan sa, uh, clinic natin yan, eh, mapupunta yan sa MC portal. i na lang natin para bumalik tayo doon sa dati. Now, gusto ko mas malaki siya. So, paano natin yung gagawin? Paano natin siya i-access? So, lagyan natin ng ganito. Header. Okay. Tapos, yung lahat ng descendant niya na LI. Tapos, ang sunod kong gagawin is itong end child. Okay. Kung pang ilang child na LI yun, is gagawin natin 3 kasi pangatlo. Ang gusto ko mangyari is yung font size niya is apart from the other. Gagawin ko siya ang 24 pixel. So, tingnan natin yun. Okay. So, as you can see, naglaki, di ba? As compared dun sa dalawang nata. So, paano yung nangyari? So, header, di ba? Tapos, meron siyang descendant na LI. So, aside from, uh, apart from selecting all the list item nung unordered list natin, naglagay tayo ng pseudo class na end child. Okay? So, pang ilang child daw, end child, yung gusto natin kunin. So, since kumuha tayo ng end child na 3, eh di ibig sabihin yung pangatlo, magayon ito. So, the third child is yung nag, nalagyan nung, ano, nalagyan nung, nalagyan nitong rule na yung font size is magiging 24. Now, so we have uh, one more task that we need to accomplish here. Yung, ang gagawin natin daw is fix the list display. So, this, this uh, display is a, is a little bit boring. So, lalagyan natin siya ng konting ano konting 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 design para mas maganda yung ano pagka-display sa kanya. So paano natin gagawin? So section tapos kukunin natin lahat ng div. Okay. And syempre lagyan natin ng end child. Lagyan natin ng end child dito. Tapos ang gusto kong gawin ay lahat ng odd. Okay. I Gusto ko maging background color is kulay gray. Ligyan natin ito. Subukan natin. Kapag refresh natin yun, ganito yung magiging itsura. So, odd. Okay, so it's, it, it never depends on the number actually. Kahit gawin natin itong 10. Okay. Which is not an odd number. Pag ginawa natin yun, eh, ito pa rin mauna. So, mangyayari ang bilang is ito. Okay, so depende dun sa element na nasa loob, hindi dun sa content. Okay. So, we also, uh, we can also add another. So, pwede natin gawin yung ginawa natin kanina dun sa task. Select a section, yung descendant niya, tapos kunin natin end elements. So, gusto kong gawin 3. Tapos, i-stack natin, lagyan natin ng hover. So, pag nag-hover siya dun sa 10 element, ang gusto kong mangyari is, gagawin natin siya na uh, text decoration. Ano natin? Uh, ano ba? Pwede natin gawin. Sige, gawin na lang natin na background. Eh, sabihin natin, gawin natin aqua. Just like that. 
So, pag nag-hover tayo, so tingin din natin, in-stack natin dito. So, sa int, child, tapos kapag hinover natin doon, ganito yung mangyayari. So, section, div, and child. Kapag ginawa natin, yun, let's refresh this. At ang end child na ito, so yan, tingnan natin. Pag ginawa natin yun, ito, yung naging itsura niya. Okay? So, yan yung power ng pseudo class. Okay, in summary, pseudo class selectors are very powerful as we discussed on the codes na nakita nyo kanina. But bear in mind na kailangan yung selector natin is readable. So simple and readable is much greater than complicated and tricky. So you may amaze your user dun sa ginawa ninyo, pero kung hindi na siya maintindihan and over-empowering na hindi na rin maganda yun sa user. So that's about it about CSS selector and CSS basic. Okay?